Good morning, folks. Harsh message coming at the end today. We're looking at 304 angstroms on our star and we'll run down the solar wind situation, IMF, and take a peek at fast radio bursts, not to mention the waters below. Up first, let's go to spaceweathernews.com and check out the last 24 hours on our star. Not much happening in terms of eruptions. Most of the last day had no sunspots or solar flares. But starting to depart on the north, we do have a little sunspot group born and heading out of sight. I say small, it is the size of Earth, but relatively small compared to other sunspot groups. Coming next to the solar wind, it remains elevated at 500 kilometers per second, but the stability of the stream has kept the minor perturbations of the magnetic field at a minimum. Well, sort of. You see, we're basically at the equinox, and the equinox periods present stronger vulnerability for geomagnetic activity due to the tilt of Earth's field relative to the sun's and that which arrives in the solar wind. It evidently allowed a rare deep auroral penetration to the more nitrogen-rich regions. That would be the pink. True, it was only a KP4, but this is what the seasonal changes do to aurora. Coming now to the coronal hole. Who would have guessed at the expanse of this opening when it first came into sight? You will likely recall that we were surprised to find the magnetic connections between Earth and Sun almost entirely avoiding a solid connection to it. Never got above 30% connected, dropped down to 20, and now this morning, just 10% connection. We seem to be favoring the solar south pole. Quick look at a paper on fast radio bursts. Some solid structure is revealed by the triple spike signature caught in real time. Hopefully it can help unravel one of the newest and most puzzling cosmic mysteries of just what these bursts are. Spectacular article about aqueous pockets at the transition zone. The water down there and at the higher low velocity zone are an enormous part of what we believe causes the foreshock signatures we use to predict earthquakes. That information is on quakewatch.net. Lastly folks, have to report another deadly hail event, this one in South Africa. One hopes this is not becoming a pattern. We greatly appreciate your support. I am awaiting Potholer's email to see if he accepts my challenge. Something tells me he won't. We've got your wind maps and shots of our star to close. We'll do this all again tomorrow, right here. But right now, it's 5.15 a.m. in the new valley of the sun. Eyes open, no fear. Be safe, everyone.